Welcome to my short course on how to build a CPU monitoring dashboard using Python. Here's how it'll look like. We've got a native desktop application window showing the current CPU load in real time, and all of this made with Python. As you might already know, most modern applications are built in layers we commonly refer to as the backend and frontend. The backend will be using Python. And the libraries we'll be using are Flask for the application mainframe, PSUtil for fetching hardware info, Flask Web GUI to embed our Flask mainframe into a native window, and finally, PyInstaller for creating an executable that can run on any computer even without Python installed. For the front end, we'll use HTML for the UI, CSS for styling the UI, and finally, JavaScript to glue the front end to the back end. The JavaScript library we will use is jQuery. You do not need to be familiar with jQuery to code along. With all that being said, let's get started. Open your code editor of choice. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Open your terminal and execute the following command to create a virtual environment. Python minus n v e n v e n v. If you do not know what virtual environments are, I recommend you look it up on Google. They are a great tool to have under your belt. Let's activate the virtual environment we just created. I can't do that immediately. I have to create a dummy Python file first. Now Visual Studio Code knows that we're working with Python. Now I can go ahead and press this button, go to interpreter path, find env scripts, and then python.exe. The virtual environment is now loaded, but the terminal is not running under it, so I need to close that, click on the trash can, and open a new terminal. You will see an env right here, and this lets you know that we are, in fact, working under our environment. Now we can go ahead and install the dependencies we need for our project. For that, enter pip install, and then we will use flask, yes, you will flask, Web GUI and Py installer. Press enter and let it load. Now it's just installing all the dependencies we need inside our virtual environment. Great, now it's finished. And just out of convenience, do pip freeze and right angle bracket requirements.txt. This is a common practice and helpful in case you'd like to share your code with others. And this is what will be generated. Just list all requirements and the specific versions we are working with inside our project. Awesome. With that, we're done with setting up our development environment. Next, we'll create our Flask mainframe. See you there. I will not teach you how Flask works in this video, as our focus lies on how to tie different technologies together to create a software product. If you don't quite understand parts of the tag we use in this series, feel free to look things up. That's one of the best ways to improve as a developer anyway. With that being said, let's create and run a simple Flask skeleton. Create a new file called app.py. I'll just rename my existing file to that. I've got a handy extension installed and can just write hw and it'll generate the ball plate needed for me. Now that that's there, let's run the app and check the results. For that, just click on this button if you're playing in Visual Studio Code. Awesome. This started a server on localhost and pod 5000. Open the address inside your web browser, and this is how it looks on my end. We just got a simple website returning hello world, which is exactly what we defined right here. As you already know, we will use HTML, and right now our app only returns a simple string, so we need to change that. For that, just import render template and create a new folder called templates, excuse me, 
and in there create a new file called index.html and here we're just gonna create a simple skeleton HTML document. Go back to app.py and switch this out for render template index.html. To make things even more simple for us, we're gonna pass in debug equals true inside the app.run function call. I'm just gonna restart my app again and let's refresh this. Now it's loading the new file. We don't really see that as well as we'd like to, so just say, hey, I'm the new HTML document. Okay, now just refresh the page, awesome. So now we know that our um, Flask mainframe is loading an HTML file, which is exactly what we want. Later on, we'll have to have some kind of way to get the current CPU load from our system. And for that, we said that we're gonna use the PSUtil module. And to just quickly test things out and get familiar with the PSUtil, I'm just gonna create a new file called temp.py and import PSUtil. And I'm just gonna write a little print statement and CPU temperature, sure, why not, at PSUtil dot cpu percent the interval we just set to 0.1 now let's just add a little percent symbol as well and if we run this a couple times you'll see that it in fact gives us the current cpu load percentage which is exactly what we want let me go ahead and open the web browser again and let's go to our new endpoint which is api slash cpu it's missing one quite traditional all right just remove this for now and it's restarting automatically refresh this and there we go 18.8 percent 7 11 awesome Now that we have our API endpoint working correctly, we'll add HTTP polling to index.html using jQuery. And with that, we're gonna just periodically call our API endpoint to receive the current CPU load at any given time. That way we'll just like in real time see the updates rendered directly inside the HTML. So to do that, go ahead and go to your index.html file. And first thing we're going to do is just add jQuery to our dependencies. And then we're going to make a script tag right inside your body script, uh, body tag, sorry. And just create a new function called fetch CPU usage. And this is basically just a classic standard jQuery powered get request. And the address is API slash CPU, which is, in fact, the route. We define our API on. Next, we want to poll this periodically every second. So we just use set interval, which is a standard JavaScript browser function. And in that function, we're just going to call fetch CPU usage. Awesome. Just save that. And let's head over to our browser again, refresh the page, open your console window, and awesome. So every second now we receive the currently uh, like the current percentage that our CPU is loaded. And this is exactly what we want. Next we'll go ahead and actually change a text element inside our DOM like interface to reflect these changes in real time. So head back over to your code editor of choice. And we're just going to also do some quick improvements on our HTML. Let's change the title for it as well. And make that say CPU meter or like whatever you want to call it. And we can delete this line too. And just make a new e tag and let it say CPU usage. And inside this element, we're also going to have a span with the 
ID CPD usage. And that's pretty much the markup. All we got to do now is dynamically update this markup via jQuery. And for that, we're just going to use a simple line, which is dollar sign and the selector, which is CPD usage. And then just HTML and data. And just to verify that this works, just go back and refresh the page. And there we go. It is updating the text we see right now in real time. Awesome. All right, let's just close this real quick and switch it back to app.run because that just helps with debugging the app more easily. Go back to your index.html file and here we'll add a native HTML tag progress. Progress. There we go. This comes with a couple um, properties. That we're going to set in a second. So let's just give it the ID usage and then max, let's go with 100 and value, set it to zero for now. All right. And let's just open this just to see how it looks right now. Refresh the page and there we go. Just a simple bar, nothing too fancy right now. Let's head back to the editor. And all we got to do now is just update the value attribute of this element inside our function fetch CPU usage. So I'll just do that. Do that and change this to usage. And then just change this to val, save, and go back at it and restart. Awesome. We already got a really basic. Uh, kind of loading bar looking style to it and yeah next we're gonna go ahead and just style this and after that we're just gonna package the app and we're done awesome just head back to your index.html file and then just figure out to add some basic styling to your app first off you're just gonna add a new style tag inside here a hat tag and we're gonna import a custom font I'm just using Google Fonts and importing Roboto. Then we're gonna address HTML and body tags to add some basic styling to it. Um, we're just using some, yeah, like base, dark mode kind of things. We're also adding the font family Roboto that we imported right here and set that for all elements inside our HTML. And let's just go back and this is white mode right now, so just refresh this, and there we go. Pretty slick and modern, right? Awesome. We're just going to add some uh, final touches to the UI. We're just also going to add a um, favicon, or in other words, an app icon to it as well, to make things just look more professional. To add a favicon to our app, we just add a simple tab with href static slash favicon.png to our hat tag. And what I also did off screen was add a new folder called static. And just know that for Flask to work correctly, this folder actually has to be called static and nothing else. And inside there, I just have the simple icon right here. Now if we just go head back into the browser and refresh this, you'll notice that we are now seeing our icon inside the tab, which is awesome. It'll also so also show, excuse me, the icon inside the packaged desktop application as well later on, as we'll see. So one thing that you'll notice is that we don't show a percentage symbol next to the number. Also when you first start the app. It's gonna show nothing, which isn't that cool. So we're gonna fix both of these things. 
And this is a pretty simple fix. Just go back to your index.html file and the HTML tag for the CPU usage, just enter the span and just let us say 00, .0 by default. And right there on my cursor, we're just going to need a percent or something. We'll also set back, refresh, and there we go. Awesome. Next up, we're just gonna package the app. So first things first, we have to set the mode that we're running in back to GUI. Just comment that out. We should also probably delete this, <laughs> but we don't need. And there we go, we also see the symbol that's working. Everything's working fine. It's resizable as well, which is kind of cool. And yeah. Now all we got to do is use PyInstaller to compile the executable. And for that, just close the app. Also close this, open a new MathLine interface. And if you remember, we already have PyInstaller inside our environment working. And that's what we're going to use to create an executable file. So all we need to do is just, we can basically just copy paste the command I'm about to write in and you don't have to understand it. Just know that if you don't do it like this, it's just not gonna work. Um, all right, there we go. So first time the pun installer, and then we're gonna give the executable a file name, which me to in my case. And then we're also going to add the one file command or like option, which is compress everything into one executable without any data files, which is also what I like to have here. And then what we're going to do in order for this to work is do paths equals env backslash lib with a big L and then side packages. This basically just tells PyInstaller to fetch all requirements, or like all modules that we use in our application and in our environment. And now we're just gonna do add data equals static, semicolon, static, and add data equals templates semicolon, templates. And the last thing is just our script file, which is app.py in our case. Just press enter and let this create a distributable file. It shouldn't take too long. Perfect. Now just open the folder and Go ahead and open the dist folder. Then we have the CPU meter. And one thing I forgot to do is add one option. Just remembered. It's working though. Like we don't need Python or anything to make this work. So close this and one option I forgot to add is no console. So dash dash no dash console. Maybe, okay. yeah, no console, just no dash between. Okay, awesome. So let's go back and open this up. There we go. Standalone, pre-compiled, native desktop application. Um, one little thing that we're gonna do, like just a little final extra thing is add a app icon to the executable itself. We're just gonna show that in a, in a minute. See you then. I went ahead and off screen created a app.ico file from my favicon PNG file. To do that, you can use pretty much any online converter from PNG to ico. And once we've got that, I put it into the root directory of my project. And all you need to do now is just 
to the existing or the previous PyInstaller command we used previously, just add dash dash icon equals app.ico or whatever your icon is called. And then it's just going to repackage the executable. And let's just go into the folder. And you'll notice on Windows at least, if you refresh, it won't show the new icon. That's because of some caching issues. If you move this executable into another folder, however, it'll gonna show the new icon. So yeah, there you go. We got our own super native, super cool, interactive, real-time CPU loading, I mean CPU usage monitor dashboard whatever you want to call it or like your cpu meter all right thanks for watching guys and girls i hope it was somehow educational and interesting for you to go through all this the complete um code will be uploaded to github it's open source it's mit licensed you can do with it whatever you want to do and it'll also feature the changes i made to make it look even cooler than it already is and yeah with that being said thank you for watching and maybe we'll see each other next time goodbye welcome to the additional section this is a preview of what we're gonna build um all we're gonna do is just add a stat indicator for the total ram percentage and yeah let's get going the first thing i'd like to add is a dedicated api endpoint that returns us the ram usage at any given point in time so that we're just going to do i'm actually just going to copy this over the endpoint we made for the cpu usage and so the name's done clash. I'm gonna append CPU to this function and then RAM to that one. And also for the route, we're gonna change this to say RAM. And the function itself, we're going to replace that. And in PS util, the function that gives us the RAM isn't called RAM percentage, but instead it's called virtual memory. And that's a method. And from that we do percent, so we get the attribute percentage. And that should give us the value. If we want to test it real quick, all we gotta do is just Take this real quick and do a quick print just like that. Run the program. So run that program. And there we go. 68.3. If I look at the task manager, you can see 68 is the current percentage of memory we use. So that works. Move that again. And this is already done. Let's go to the next step. So the first thing I'm going to do is just encapsulate this with a div and duplicate it. Copy and paste. And also another thing that I haven't done here is I just say CPU usage. CPU. CPU. We're gonna have to fix these things up in the refresh function as well soon. But change this to RAM for now. Then just to RAM usage text and the other ID to RAM usage. And just with that, okay. See how it looks. Oh yeah, I forgot something. Um, I do have to 
already replaced these references with CPU. The start with everything right there as well. And start the app. Yeah, there we go. So the CPU meter still works and the RAM doesn't show anything, which is exactly what we want right now. In the next step, we're gonna update the refresh function and we're also gonna um, refactor a little bit of code so we don't have to copy paste this. Okay, now we're gonna work on the scripting part of all of this. And right now we have one function called refresh. It doesn't take any parameters for now. And the route and also the references to the DOM elements are hard coded right now. And that is something we can change and we should do because essentially we're gonna need all of this logic to work also for the new RAM indicator. So what I'm going to do is just change this refresh to, um, I mean, I'm just going to like change, I'm going to add some parameters to this. We're going to be the API route, which is this API route. And then we also have two references to elements. One is the value itself and the other is for the text. So we're gonna change this and add a parameter that says element ID, thanks for the autocomplete, that's cool. Place this here with that. And then also um, text ID. And that replaces these two references. And now in the refresh, I mean in the set interval call, we're gonna have to add the route, which would be exactly this. I've got advanced autocomplete, but have it on. And then also the same thing for the RAM. So I have the route the element that we want to um, target, which is this, and also the text, which is in this case, the obvious technical. Now this should all work just as is. We're gonna try it out right now. Okay, there we go. This looks good. Check task manager, and yeah, I'm at 67%. And there we go, we've successfully added a RAM indicator to our CPU meter. Now, of course, we should have, um, we should change the name to stats meter, for example. But these are all things that you can do by your, yourself. And also, one last thing to note is that you might have realize that my indicators change position fluidly. That is because I've added a bit of logic off screen. You will want to have that as well. All you gotta do is just add a label for the click ID and then just do it just like so. A label with a span. And then a percent symbol, and then and basically just copy this off screen. I'm not gonna explain this code because it's a bit wanky, but you should get the get the idea. That's only also only if you really want to get um blue transitions between different values when they are updated on the screen. Thanks for watching. See you next time.